everybody! Welcome to the Jade and Stitches Show! We are fast approaching the season of pumpkin everything, which is okay by me because I love pumpkins. They are cheerful, orange, happy harbingers of the harvest. <laughs> and pumpkin pattern projects have been popping up in my Pinterest feed like crazy lately. So I thought we would do something pumpkin related this week. I also love drawstring bags. Little sacks and pouches are so handy and I can't make enough of them. They're also a fun way to use up scraps. So today we're going to combine both drawstring sacks and pumpkins and make this cute little drawstring pumpkin pouch. <laughs> Makes a really cute little gift bag. It's also handy for all those little odds and ends that end up floating around your purse or backpack. You can keep them all in one tidy little place and it's a seasonal theme to boot. So <laughs> let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, head on over to the craft table and whip up a whole patch of these little pumpkin pouches. <laughs> In order to make our little pumpkin drawstring sack, I'm using worsted weight yarn, just a small amount. You probably won't need any more than 25 grams of orange, a very small amount of green, and an even smaller amount of brown. This is all worsted weight acrylic yarn, size 4. You're going to need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and we're going to use a 5.5 millimeter hook or an I9. And once you've got all that handy, we can get started. We're going to begin with a cinch circle. Chain one to secure your circle. And we're going to begin by working eight single crochet into that circle. Remember to work over your short tail so that we can cinch it shut when we're done. Once you have eight single crochet into your circle, grab your short tail, cinch it shut and we are going to work directly into the first single crochet we made for row two. So we are not joining our rows with a slip stitch, we are working in the round. So find that first stitch, get your hook into it. I'm going to work over my short tail but you can leave yours to the back to weave in later if you like. We're going to work two single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So we had eight stitches in row one, Working two single crochet in every stitch, we will have 16 stitches at the end of row two. At the end of row two, you will have 16 single crochet. We're going to work directly into the next stitch to begin row three. Work two single crochet into the next stitch. And one single crochet into the next stitch. So that's the repeating pattern all the way around for row three. Work two single crochet into the next stitch and one single crochet into the stitch after that. Repeat that all the way around and you will have 24 stitches at the end of row three. At the end of row three we have 24 stitches. We are still increasing. We're going to work directly into the next stitch to begin row four. That's two single crochet into the next stitch and single crochet into each of the next two. So that's your repeating pattern for row four. Two single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet once into each of the next two stitches, and at the end of row four you'll have 32 stitches. That's 32 single crochets at the end of row four. We've got one more row of increasing to do. We're going to work directly into the next stitch. Work two single crochet into the next stitch, which is the first stitch of row five. One single crochet into each of the next three stitches, and that's the repeating pattern. Two single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into each of the next three. Repeat that all the way around and you'll have 40 stitches at the end of row five. At the end of row five, you'll have 40 stitches. You might find your circles buckling a little bit. Don't worry about it. It will disappear once we've finished our little sack. We're now just going to single crochet in every single stitch all the way around for an additional 10 rows. So we've already worked five rows. We're going to work 10 more rows of just straight single crochet. 
So at the end of row 15, you will still have 40 stitches, and I will see you there. Once you have completed 10 additional rows of just straight single crochet and you find yourself at the end of row 15 and you know you're at the end, if you count all your rows, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Also, here's my first row and here is where, boop, it turns into row 2. I use that as my little start point. I sort of scoot all the way up and I make sure I put my last stitch of row 15 right there. You would have probably finished back here somewhere. Just add some more single crochet. It doesn't change your stitch count and that evens out the top of your little sack. We're going to change things up a little bit now. We're going to slip stitch into the next stitch. That sort of effectively closes off row 15. And now row 16 is going to be our little eyelet row. We're going to chain 3 to begin. This chain three counts as a half double crochet, chain one. We're going to skip the next stitch, find the one after that, and half double crochet into it. Then you're going to half double crochet into each of the next two stitches. Chain one, skip the next stitch, find the one after that, and half double crochet into it. Half double crochet into each of the next two stitches as well. And that's the pattern you're going to repeat all the way around. Chain one, skip a stitch, find the next one, half double crochet into it, and half double crochet into each of the next two stitches as well. Work that all the way around. You'll have a little repeating stitch row of a space, three double crochets, a space, three, sorry, half double crochets, a space, three half double crochets, etc. And I will see you back around at the beginning. Once you find yourself all the way back around at the beginning, you'll see that chain three we began the row with, count up to the second chain, slip your hook through it, and join with a slip stitch. And there you go. You can now fasten off your orange and grab your brown color. Take your brown and make a slip knot. Grab your little sack and we're going to join our yarn right where we knotted off in this single crochet or in the sort of this chain two that we joined with a slip stitch in. So you should be able to see it there. Slip your hook through it. We're going to join our yarn with a single crochet, so the loop on your hook counts. Pick up a loop and single crochet. You're going to single crochet into that space that you created by chaining one, and you're going to single crochet into the top of every stitch all the way around. Now don't forget that the top of this stitch is always going to be sitting just to the right. That's because we're working in the round. Make sure you grab it. The other two are pretty easy to see. I'm just working over my little short tails here, but if you find that cumbersome, you can just throw them to the inside and weave them in later. Then, when you come up on your space, this is technically the chain. But we're going to actually just put our hook right through the whole space, just so that it stands out a little bit better. And then make sure you catch that next stitch and just Work it all the way around. You should still have 40 stitches when you are finished this row of single crocheting in every stitch and space all the way around. Back around at the beginning, when you've worked your last single crochet, you might have a bit of a gap here or a false stitch where you joined or in between where you joined in your last crochet. Just ignore it, jump over it, and put your hook directly into the first single crochet that you began your brown row with and single crochet into it. You can single crochet into each stitch all the way around for two more rows. So we will have three rows of brown single crochet in total. Once you've completed three rows in total of the brown single crochet, 
Once you've come round to the start point again, just slip stitch into the next stitch to finish off that row. You can snip your yarn, fasten off, and take a moment to weave in all your little tails. So if you still have some tails showing on the inside here, I think I've got a little bit of orange and some brown, grab your yarn needle and just run it underneath the inside of some of those stitches from a row that's nearby and just poke your little tails into them and weave them in nice and tight. Now our little sack needs a drawstring, so grab your green yarn, make a slip knot, and chain 80, that's eight zero, 80 chains. Once you have 80 chains, you want to grab your scissors, snip your yarn, you don't need very much tail at all, and carefully fasten off. You can pull up both ends together, pair up your knots, and you can trim your two little tails just so they're even. There we go. Then you can pick up your little sack, grab one tail, and weave it in and out through your little sack all the way around. There's the drawstring made. Now we just need to add a little tendril. This is like that little bit of vine that is left <laughs> hanging on to a pumpkin at the end. So I made a really long one here. I chained 21 to begin, but I'm gonna make a slightly shorter one for today's tutorial. So if you wanna make a long one like this one, chain 21 and follow the rest of these instructions. But I am going to make a nice short one. We're going to begin with a slip knot. If you want to make the long tendril, chain 21. If you're going to make a short one like me, chain 11. Whether you have 21 or 11 chains, this is what we do to make a tendril. Skip the first chain from the hook, find the second one, and single crochet four times into it. You're going to single crochet four times into each chain all the way back. It does get a little tight, it will start to spin on you and that is perfectly okay. Just take your time, work four single crochet into every single chain and I'll see you back up at the top. Once you're finished working four single crochet into every single chain, you can grab your scissors and fasten off. Again, you don't need very much tail, you're just going to weave this in anyway. So grab that, pull it back through the last loop on your hook, there we go. Now your tendril might look a little funny, you want to grab the bottom and spin it in the direction that it has been twisting on you. So grab the bottom and just keep twisting, twist, 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 and then give it a little bit of a pull, and there's your tendril. You can grab your yarn needle and you can weave in those little short tails together underneath some of the stitches of that only row you crocheted. So grab both of those little tails and just pull them through that last little thing. Don't pull it too tight because you don't really want to um, bend it out of out of shape, and then if you've got anything left over, you can just trim it. There we go. Now, you should have a space in that last chain that you worked your four single crochets into that you should be able to see. You should be able to actually put your yarn needle right through it. So there's a space. You're going to take the two ends of the drawstring you made Pull them through your yarn needle, it's a bit of a tight pull but you can do it, there we go. Then you're going to pull those both through that space, so that last little hole might be a bit tight but that's okay, that's what we want. And this little tendril kind of works like a bag closure, so when you 
pull your bag nice and tight. Your little tendril will sort of keep your bag closed and then you don't have to tie a knot, you just have to tie the bow part of your bow. And that makes undoing your drawstring a lot easier. You can stick your finger in behind your little tendril and open up your bag. And that way you're not putting too much stress on your drawstring or the little closure. And that's it! <laughs> that is your little pumpkin drawstring bag all ready for some harvest treats. So there you go, a pumpkin pouch. You can make it with a slightly longer tendril like I have here or a slightly shorter one, but both make great little stops for your drawstring so that you don't have to um, tie a full knot and it also makes opening and closing them a lot easier. Plus it's cute and what pumpkin looks like a pumpkin without a little bit of a vine attached to it. <laughs> so that's it for this week everyone. I hope you enjoyed making these along with me and we will see you soon on the Jade and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week. Bye everybody!